All right, guys, for this edition, um, I know that there's a lot of different kinds of swimmers out there. I know there's a lot of different kinds of styles. And uh, to this point, you've heard uh, my opinion on everything, but uh, I'm gonna run around to a couple other of my buddies that are swim coaches in the area. These guys coach uh, high school. They coach, uh, some of them have coached USA swim, uh, swim teams, and they all coach uh, summer league teams currently. So um, I'm gonna get their opinion on a few uh, key aspects, and uh, we're gonna see what uh, see what they have to say. All right, I'm here with uh, David Reason, it's Doug McCulkey. Uh, we've been buddies for probably 10 years now. It's been a, yeah. it's been a while, and uh, he's right. coached uh, summer league for a long time. And he's got a whole lot of experience with summer league athletes, so I really value what he has to say on uh, some of these questions. First question. Beyond putting their face in the water is that they can't swim past a certain point. And I have a lot of kids that don't like to go into the deep end when they swim, or they feel that they can't complete a lap or, or continuously swim past a certain point and I think that if you guys uh, you know trust yourself and, and listen to your coaches that's something that you can you can hopefully overcome. Probably uh, the biggest fear they have is putting their face in the water and uh, getting their eyes wet and uh, that seems to make them very uncomfortable uh, and also another big fear is uh, not being able to get to the side of the pool. Sure. If, uh, if they're like away from the side of the pool or the steps and they can't touch, then uh, they, they start to potentially panic. Well, okay. the, 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 what we try to do with the, the fears about them being able to swim in the deep end is let them know if you can swim at all, in any depth of water it doesn't matter how deep the water is if you can swim in three feet and stand up you can swim in five feet six feet eight feet ten feet and if you just believe in yourselves and understand that once you can swim in any depth of water okay it doesn't matter how deep the water is uh, that's a big fear I think a lot of my kids have to overcome is that they don't want to go into the deep end I can't swim in the deep end once you can swim whether it's 10, 5, 25, or 50 yards, it doesn't matter how deep the water is, you can swim anywhere. The first thing I recommend is that the young people uh, wear goggles. Uh, if they can get a That's nice... huge. It is huge. Uh, what I recommend is the type of goggles that have a, a nice uh, rubber backing, not a foam. Uh, we always want to recommend <laughs> that they close their mouth when they're under the water and what I call big cheeks. <laughs> and uh, we start them out with uh, like uh, flotation devices, some kind of a kickboard, or I have a, a little red bar with what looks like foam dumbbells on the end, or bar, uh, weights, but they're just very light, of course. And they hold on to that, and we work on uh, you know just main, maintaining that integrity of the face in the water. And then, of course, the second thing uh, I also tell them is uh, where they... Uh, use their legs, and where the strongest swimming muscles beside the heart uh, is, or the strongest muscles are in the legs. All right, cool. Do you also find with the goggles sometimes the kids have problem with the suction on their eyes, and sometimes it's because they've got their goggles on upside down, and the, and the <laughs> nose piece kind of is going backwards. So be uh, careful with that because if your goggles are on upside down, the nose piece is actually formed across your bridge yes. of your nose this way and if it's backwards it can uh, allow water to slip in by your eyeball right. sockets right yeah. and this is really really important okay coach reason yeah why do hummingbirds hum um they got short wings no because they don't know the words <laughs> The more you put your face in the water, the easier it is to swim. We do a lot of what's called station to station swimming, where they'll swim from one coach to another to another without breathing. In this way, they get used to understanding that they can swim a certain amount of length, whether it's five yards, 10 yards, by just 
keeping their head down and swimming from coach to coach to coach. The exercises you guys can do, you can go fishing for things at the bottom of the pool. That's cool. We do that at our pool too, yeah. with the getting, uh, like I'll throw pennies all over the pool. Yes. And then they'll yeah. go down and they get a little Dixie cup or something like that and they fill it up. Yes, and, you know, and they that's get to take great. Home, so. That is awesome. Yes. I might have to steal that, coach. Another thing I do, um, I'll, I'll tell parents, like if, uh, if a um, kid is having a hard time, going underwater then I'll tell the parents to bring like a broomstick or something like that stand the broomstick up in the water and then the kid will hold on to it you know like a fire pole yeah and uh, you know they can slide up and down but they still feel safe right so, yeah yeah that's a great so, idea. A first thing again back to the legs uh, I always teach the uh, flutter kick first uh, trying to keep a little straighter leg uh, new swimmers often have a tendency to bicycle in the water and when you do that, you bend your knees too much and bring them towards your chest. And that, of course, changes the center of gravity and it makes them sink. And uh, try and keep that straighter leg and small, fast kicks. And always, like, yeah. instead of a fork, make it a spoon, you know. There you go. You got to close those fingers close up. Close the fingers. We always teach them, as they get older, uh, two th main things. And that's about where your axes or the axis in your body is. And for the long strokes, the free and back, we teach them the body is the long axis and rotate around the long axis and the free and back. And that helps promote the flotation as well and the confidence and the proper technique. And then in the free, excuse me, in the breaststroke and butterfly, the short axis goes between the hip bones, mm -hmm. uh, ends of the hips, and it's up and down like that. Yeah. And with the, the long axis, that's with keeping the head and spine still, exactly. right? And it creates that axis for the body to rotate Beautiful. Around. That's it's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Swimming is such a great sport because not only do you get to compete with your teammates and have fun and relays, but it's something you do that once you do it, it's a life skill. And you can have fun other than swim team and play games at the pool and go down the slide and go off the diving board. It might take some people a very short amount of time to do something. It might take some other people longer. But be comfortable with yourself. Don't be scared. Don't try to say, well, I can't do this because of somebody else or I can't do this because of don't do that. Be yourself, listen to your coaches, and enjoy it. For all you new swimmers, it's all about having fun. Uh, the, I have five words I tell every kid, even all the way up to the, my most competitive swimmers in high school. And the th three, first three words, do your best. The last two words are have fun. And if you're not having fun, then you, know, you shouldn't be in it. All right, here's the last question, and this one is probably the... Uh most important question that you've been asked today. So I hope you're ready for this. Um, what's the best way to carve wood? With a knife. Whittle by whittle. Whittle by whittle. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck, everybody. Don't forget, you gotta practice these skills in order to master them. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out yesterday's episode down below. And if you have any questions or comments, please ask. I'd love to help.